Hi, everybody. It is one of the most famous drugstores in the world. Family owned. It's called C.O. Bigelow. I think it's been in movies and TV shows. It's well known here in New York City, as well as the big chains like Walgreens and uh, Dwayne Reed and all those kinds of places. Uh, but everybody is going to their pharmacist lately in a big way because of the coronavirus scare. Alec Bigelow is, I'm sorry, Alec Ginsberg has been in the pharmacy business basically all of his life. Uh, he's been a part of the Bigelow family or Bigelow uh, uh, drugstore for how long, sir? Um, I've been full time there for four years now, but grew up in the store, you know, working every odd job there was from the front counter to, to the delivery team. And uh, now I'm back in the pharmacy and it's been absolutely insane the past couple of days. You said this was the worst or, or the busiest, craziest day you've ever had as a pharmacist? Um, definitely up there. I mean, people just coming in all day long looking for masks and uh, hand sanitizer and lozenges and, you know, literally anything that they can keep on hand just to make sure that they're prepared. God forbid something happens. Are you running out of stuff? Um, we were. Luckily, uh, about a week and a half ago, we kind of thought to ourselves, me and the other pharmacists, they're like, what can we do to prepare ourselves here? So we tried to order everything we possibly could and stock up. But we're getting a little bit more crazy than normal because most other stores around us have kind of run out of everything and people are being sent over to us. Now, in some of the footage I'm looking at here, every now and then you'll see somebody in a mask, a surgical mask. And I've heard conflicting things about those. To me, it sounds like, yeah, it couldn't hurt. But then I'm hearing, actually, it could hurt. If you wear a surgical mask and you're just a person, you may not have any business wearing one? Yeah, so I think the, the CDC's told the public that they don't want anybody wearing masks unless you're actually sick. Part of that is because there's a major shortage of them. So when you're buying and stocking up on these masks, you're taking them away from you know people in hospitals or people who actually need them, like healthcare workers. Um, if you're walking on the street and you aren't sick, it's not really doing that much for you. It does kind of scare you a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely adding to the anxiety of the people on the street. When you see somebody wearing one, you're thinking like, oh, let me avoid that person. They they probably have something. So people go and uh, they like to ask their pharmacist, what do you think? You know, what should I do? So uh, what should people do? So number one thing is just make sure you're washing your hands and being safe. So whether that's with hand sanitizer or, you know, when you're at home, any chance you get, make sure you're washing. What most people don't think about is washing your hands is not just throwing a little soap on going like this and walking away. It's a good 20 seconds. Make sure and you're getting every crevice, especially a place like New York. You're on the subway. You're walking around on the street. You don't know who's touched the things that you've been touching before. Um, so try to get some hand sanitizer on you just in case you can't get to a bathroom and just being as clean as possible. We have a case here in New York City, uh, by the way, and now we know a lot of cases in Washington State, throughout the country, really, Rhode Island. We know that there are going to be more. You've been through SARS. You even remember Ebola. What do you think the capacity uh, for people when they hear this kind of news? What do you anticipate happening? Um, obviously, a lot of panic, and that's what I saw in the store today. I mean, I no think, kidding, panic. <laughs> I think uh, you know people watch the news and and they get wrapped up in things. They see people dying, and they don't really think about the real details and the facts of it. I mean, this virus, it, it is crazy and it is insane, but it's still a 1% death rate, and uh, which is relatively low. I mean, high for a virus, but it's still not crazy in terms of you're going to get it and you're definitely going to go to the hospital and die. I mean, most of the people in the United States who have this virus are just sitting at home, you know, not leaving their houses until they recover from it. Most healthy people are not going to have a major problem. It's people who are immunocompromised or are young kids or are really, you know, our geriatric population who have more to worry about with it. And if you go to cdc.gov, you mentioned the CDC earlier, they've got great information, quite frankly, better than any cable news, better than any broadcast news or website uh, that's not cdc.gov. Yeah. I mean, it's very matter of fact, and it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make you worry. It kind of puts everything in perspective. And their advice is pretty basic. Again, like you said, wash the hands. Yep. Just be clean and, you know, watch out for yourself. Try not to, uh, you know, if you're feeling sick, stay home. Everybody has a responsibility to protect the people around them as well. So if you're not feeling great, don't go to work and put everybody else at risk. You know, everybody in the community has that responsibility. Who's the most worried, by the way? Elderly, young people, millennials, uh, baby boomers? Uh, I'm going to say any mom. 
All the moms are very worried, coming in, worried about their kids going to school, trying to stock up on everything they can. And that's interesting because I heard that children are perhaps the most resistant to coronavirus. Have you heard that? Um, I've heard that from some people. Again, it's, it's new. We haven't had uh, that, much, that much people studying it in that sense. So it's hard to know for sure what you can believe and what you can't. I will say in terms of the regular flu, kids are really the most at risk for it. And th that's the most dangerous population that it's for. So I tend to think more along those lines that kids aren't going to have such an easy time fighting it off. But who knows? It's very early in the process. All right. By the way, standard treatment, if you got the flu or the coronavirus flu, is what? Um, with the coronavirus right now, it's just symptomatic. I mean, with the flu, we have some things we can use to fight it. But uh, coronavirus, we don't really know yet. All right. Well, while you're here, I've got two questions that I've always wanted to ask a pharmacist. They are not coronavirus uh, related. Sure. But Pharmacists are always elevated. You're always a little bit higher than the rest of the store. No matter where it is, you're, you guys just look down on us. Yeah. Why, why do you have that platform? Why are you higher? That's a great question. I've really never thought about that before. Um, I do know in a lot of pharmacies, people are blocked off from the back just to protect people's health care information. You know, if you could see straight into the pharmacy, you'd see a lot of that HIPAA protected info from other customers in the store. That's your answer for privacy. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Oh, exactly. all right. Mystery solved. Secondly, uh, you're a pharmacist. How long does it take to become a pharmacist? So nowadays you need to get a doctorate degree. So it's a four year graduate program and not every program requires you to actually graduate from undergrad before you enter. So you do have to get your undergrad degree eventually. I did about three years of just my prerequisites in science, went into my graduate program and finished the rest of undergrad during it. So it took me seven years. Most people, it's eight. So that makes a lot of sense when I, I feel self-conscious about buying, say, a candy bar from the pharmacist. You know what I mean? I feel, quite frankly, like it's beneath you. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? And do you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, I still, because I come from Bigelow, I believe in that old-fashioned drugstore image where, you know, you can get your medication, but you can also get, like, an egg cream. So, uh, <laughs> you know. All right, last question on this. Can you buy... You can leave your store out of this, but I am still surprised that in some drugstores you can buy cigarettes. It's just as shocking to me. As a pharmacist, I feel it's my duty to get as many people off smoking as possible. At Bigelow's, we do not sell cigarettes and have not for many, many, many years. And I think most drugstores you'll find now are pushing uh, smoking cessation stuff more than the actual cigarettes. By the way, if you're watching across the country, Bigelow might be familiar to you because I, I, I could swear that you were in an episode of what, Sex in the City or something like that? Uh, we've been in a lot of things, Sex in the City, Friends, um, even we've been there since 1838. So uh, What we, happened in the Friends episode? <laughs> they just flash the building in the background a lot. You know, we've been in uh, a lot of movies just because we've been in that same 6th Avenue between 8th and 9th Street oh. spot with the iconic sign. So people walk past us all the time. I was hoping that Phoebe had a meltdown or something like that. <laughs> no, not the case. All right. Yeah. Alec Ginsberg, thank you very much. Uh, CEO Bigelow uh, here in New York. What's your website? Uh, Bigelowchemist.com. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks oh, so and much. next time I'll ask you about an apothecary and what is the difference between that and a drugstore. Of course. We'd love to be back. Thank okay. you.